In this segment of Attendance Tracker, we'll review what's needed for somebody to be able to check a child in or out. We'll go through the first time registration process, whether or not you have a fingerprint reader. And then we'll go through a sample of checking a child in and out and the resulting time card entries. So let's say I've got Greg and Maria who are going to be pickup people for Peter and Wendy. The fact that they're listed as payers doesn't really matter. What is critical is that here in the child relationship box, they are flagged as pickup people. For instance, if grandfather is also going to be a pickup person, we would put him in here and flag him as a pickup person. And then we could give them all temporary registration codes. I'm going to come right back to the screen in a second. The other thing that we need is the child needs to be enrolled and they need to have a classroom assigned. Once that's in place, we can either issue a large number of temporary registration codes or one at a time. I'm going to do it both ways. So one at a time, I would come here, information and relationships. I would double click on Greg Adams and I would click on the new register button and write that number down. And if I was also going to give Maria Adams a temporary code, I would double click on her, click on new register and write that number down. The alternative way, instead of doing them one at a time, is let's say it's school's going to open in the next few days, is to go to functions, attendance tracker, temporary registration. You'll get a screen that says basically it's going to issue numbers for everybody who has not yet registered as long as they're a pickup person and the children are currently enrolled. You could run this every day. You're not going to erase codes that you've already assigned or fingerprints that have already registered. It's just temporary registration numbers for people who aren't yet registered. And you'll click on yes. And it'll tell you where to go and run that report. Attendance tracker registration temporary. Let's just run it to see what it looks like. Reports, standard reports. And I went to attendance tracker. Registration, temporary registration. There's no date here. You just run it. And these are the same codes that we just seen for Greg and Maria. So if you have a large number of parents, you would print this sheet out. And then the first day you could greet them and give each person their code. We'll now go to the check-in workstation for the balance of this process. So Greg and or Maria would come up. And the very first time, they're going to click on the register button, not the start here, but register. So I'm going to have Greg go through this with his fingerprint. And then for those of you without a fingerprint reader, I'll go through it with Maria with no fingerprint. So click on register. They'll need their temporary registration code. Click next. Greg will enter his. He should get welcome Greg, not anybody else. Click next. He needs four samples of the fingerprint and then a confirmation. So he's going to put his finger down on the fingerprint four times. We are not storing the fingerprint graphically. We're just coming up with a number that represents that finger. And then next, and here we're confirming that that finger is consistently registered. The answer is yes. I'm going to go through the registration process for Maria right now also. She would come up and click register. And if you did not have a fingerprint reader on the next screen after she enters her number, she would get welcome Maria. She would click next. You would not get that fingerprint prompt. You would instead see this prompt four to eight digit person ID and then a password. She would come here and click next. She would enter something that was unique to her. Let's say the last four digits of social security or the last four digits of a phone number. That would be the person ID and then another number that would be the password for that person ID. So two sets of four digit numbers. And now I come and I enter the other one. I'm just entering a simple number that I can remember. And now both of them have successfully registered and they will do the following every day when they check the child in or out. Start here. I'm going to put my fingerprint down. Remember, this is Greg Adams. And Peter is checked out and so is Wendy. 
these are the two children that they are flagged as a pickup person for. If there were more children that they were flagged for, they would appear here. So let's say they click on these two children. They will be checked in, will be checked in. You click finish and you're done. At the end of the day, the process is basically the opposite one. Greg would come in and put his fingerprint down, or let's do it with Maria without the fingerprint. We click start here. It says put your fingerprint down. If you didn't have a fingerprint reader, you wouldn't see this screen. You would instead see this screen. And she'd put her codes in. And she'd click enter. And basically the same process. The children are checked in. You'd click on them, you'd check them out, click finish, and you're done. Let's go back and take a look to see what that looks like on the child time card. So here we have the two children in ProCare. Peter's time card, I'm going to click on that time card icon. And you can see that Greg checked the child in and Mary checked the child out by the initials. And the same is true for Wendy Adams, the two different parents checking them in or out. About the only variation on this would be if you have Tuition Express and you have set up the option for pay at the check-in workstation, let's say Greg signs in, he'll have an option here for looking at the accounting balance or the payment. He could click on it and he could select make a payment. Again, you'd need Tuition Express, which is an optional service from ProCare in order to do that.